Hello and welcome to this NDTV special. This past week, the right to education came into being formally. Borrowing from Jawaharlal Nehru, the HRD Minister Kapil Sibyl said that this could be, in a sense, India's new tryst with its destiny, its untapped potential. It is indeed a historic week, a big week for India's education challenges. But several questions are being raised about how this right will work on the ground. How will it translate into being much more than a well-intentioned and very ambitious slogan? Private schools have already petitioned the Supreme Court objecting to the government's decision that they should now reserve 25% of their seats for economically disadvantaged children. Others are asking where will the teachers come from? And finally at the heart of the debate, the right to education is all very well, but what about the right to the equality of quality education. To answer some of these questions and many, many more, we're joined by the man of the moment, Mr. Kapil Sibyl himself, with our live studio audience of students, principals, and people who have spent a long time working in the field of education. First, let me start with you, Kapil. We were talking earlier in the week about how it was unprecedented that the Prime Minister should make a standalone address to the nation on one specific law. And you explained that it was the first time in a sense that a fundamental right had been added to the constitution. But 6 to 14 is the age group you've identified in a sense. Why this age group? Why only this first age group? Of all, first of all, Article 45 of the Directive Principles, which was earlier, it was not a fundamental right. It was part of Directive Principles, which, as you know, are not enforceable. Yeah. Um, there was a dream that this would be implemented, but 62, three years, 62 years have gone by and it's not been implemented. That's right. So um, that particular directive principle was now translated into a fundamental right. And that talked about 6 to 14. Hmm. Now, as a government hmm. uh, and as a nation, I think we need to look at children between 0 to 6 because, you know, health and education are hmm. interrelated. Yeah. And we need to, ch to look at children 14 and beyond. So why didn't you in this because, particular act? Because, as you know, that even... For this act, there was a huge amount of debate as to how we can implement it because it all depends on resources. Remember, as far as school education is concerned, especially elementary and secondary, the private sector doesn't pitch in much. Why? Because it has no real economic benefit to set up schools in rural areas. So 93% of investment in the school sector is by the state. So the state needs money, right? The state needs resources unless you have 9% growth for years to come, you won't have those resources. Mm. Even, even to get resources for this, a lakh and seventy odd thousand crores is not an easy job. Mm. And you heard Mayavati saying. I was just going to ask you. Yeah, Mayavati is already have, saying you know, she doesn't Mayavati, have the Mayavati, resources. Mayavati can build statues, spend thousands of crores, <laughs> right? Well, the audience, the audience you know, sees your point. Thousands that, of yeah. crores, you know, for that. But when it comes to empowering our children, she cries about resources. The Finance Commission this year has given twenty-five thousand crores over a five-year period for the Right to Education Act. So with the resources that we've been able to garner, we have translated a directive principle into a fundamental right. In the years to come, when we have more resources, you know, we would love as government to actually take care of the others as but well. But if you have your biggest state of Uttar Pradesh saying we don't have the money to do this. <laughs> but you know why she's saying that. She doesn't like the Congress? No, it's not she doesn't <laughs> like the Congress. You know, she knows that she's in difficulty. And she wants to politicize education mm -hmm. as, you know, as some chief ministers uh, are, are, are prone to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but there's, you know, there are other states in the country whose chief ministers have not sort of said anything. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is a political ploy. Um, but I say to her, uh, Mayavati ji, these are your children and our children. It's their future. It's the future of India. Mm -hmm.